Stop the cap. Safety off. Make sure the medical items get sent to the clinic. And the food goes to the storage by the mess halls. Put those crates back on the truck. Wait. What? We're not wasting any more supplies on these people. Put them back, Private. Sir. What the hell are you doing, Colonel? They are already dead, Doctor. Are you insane? They need care. What about the staff? Collateral damage. Now, take your hand off my soldier. If you go ahead with this, I will report your con- What the f- Bar the gate, Sergeant. Looks like you got a riot brewing. Lock and load! Put it down. So, I came across the, or a video, uh, by a YouTuber named Natalie Burnell. And she did an interview with Colonel McGregor. Now, I watch a lot of the content that is floating around of Colonel McGregor. I don't even think he has his own YouTube channel. And there are several things in this video, and I encourage you to watch it. You might want to watch it before listening to this video. But there's several things in this video that I agree with. And then there's several things in this video that make me cringe. And there is a huge danger to black people and African-Americans, and, or excuse me, uh, African-Americans and other minorities uh, when it comes to this video. And I was actually listening to this video with a Pakistani guy. And in typical fashion, you know, there's a lot that superficially he did not get. Right. And he was, you know, born and raised here, but he didn't get it. And this is typically what you see from a lot of uh, minorities, model minorities, you know, where, you know, they're they they don't understand in a weird way. They don't understand the savagery of white people, even though I'm like and the British went into India and Pakistan uh, just to exploit it and vacuum resources out of the country and forcibly impose themselves on your people. And yet you come to America that you see as the land of opportunity and you have your businesses and, and, and your companies and you look at it like, well, hey, at least we're not like the blacks. You know, we're at the top of the in terms of like, you know, uh, you know, household income. Right. Because they run businesses. They're a merchant class. Right. But I'm like, I'm like, you're not listening to what, you know, he's saying about, you know, the coming collapse, because basically this video, he was talking about, you know, the coming collapse. And Natalie kind of serves as this uh, like white female conservative voice. I don't even know if she's a conservative, but she threw up a couple dog whistles about personal responsibility and even, you know, um, uh, uh, Colonel McGregor threw up, you know, some dog whistles about, you know, rule of law. And, um, you know, he, he dismissed uh, white uh, white nationalists. He said that, you know, Joe Biden is chasing a ghost, you know, which is I find kind of weird because in other videos he's kind of acknowledged it. Then in this video, he's like, it's it's not a real thing. Like the white nationalists are not a real thing. Right. Meanwhile, we got the Buffalo shooter, the AME church shooter, the Kroger shooter, the um, friggin Jacksonville shooter. Right. We got, you know, the Charlottesville, you know, the Jews will not replace us. People, we got the neo Nazis in Orlando. We got the neo Nazis in Ohio. Right. We got where, where else? Where else? The, the true patriot walking around the streets of Philadelphia. But, you know, I doubt that you could fill a, 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 a stadium, you know, a, a high school stadium with these people. Right. It's like, nah, you're just you're not on the Internet enough you know, or, or, or cruising around, you know, you know, uh, looking at the stuff. Right. And, and people say, well, he is on the internet. No, he's not on the internet. 
He's giving his opinion. People are interviewing him and then they go off and they post the shit. But, um, you know, again, going back to that Jacksonville manifesto about, you know, TND, you know, total ninja death. Right. That's what TND stands for. Right. These people that fantasize about the Turner Diaries. And, you know, he's up there basically acknowledging or saying that, you know, the system is going to collapse. Right. Now, a lot of people think, oh, that can't happen. You know, again, it always it, it, it's not it, it can never happen. It's an impossibility until it does. This is one of the things that he talked about in the video in reference to like the Bolshevik revolution and 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 like the the uh, the, the balkanization of Europe of of, of what, would, what would that be? The 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 Balkans in Europe. You know, which is not the Baltics, that's Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. The Balkans are like Romania, what used to be Yugoslavia, right? The Slav areas, you know, and they broke apart after the end of communism and, you know, got into a whole bunch of fighting. And, you know, you got this movie coming out in April, I think it's April 24th, Civil War. And I'm interested to see that movie. I'll probably go see that movie. I mean, they're capitalizing on all this rhetoric about, you know, Civil War. But I don't think I don't think people really recognize what the shit means. Like even even my Pakistani friend didn't like really fully recognize what it means. He's like, well, we have this and we have that. I'm like, motherfucker, that don't mean shit. It's just like I'm listening to Colonel McGregor talk about buy gold and 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 we're gonna go and and and, and you should buy gold and 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 talking about pit Bitcoin like it sounded like a promotional video. This Natalie uh, Burnell, her video sounded like a promotional video for for Bitcoin, and 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 I'm like you know you're talking about revolution. Revolutions are bloody. You know, they, they, like this this whole idea of there being a, a soft transition of power. First off, you got to deal with the wealthy people who already control the wealth and they can always pay half the poor to kill the other half. That's what you're missing. You know, unless the, you know, the dollar, you know, completely collapse and utterly collapse. Like there's so many like different stages, you know, to this. It's like, OK, let me know where I'm coming in at so that I know where I need to take the conversation. You know what I mean? Oh, Wall Street collapses. OK, you know, it, uh, uh, you know, or you want to say the dollar collapses. That's a different conversation. Right. You want to say that, you know, the wealthiest billionaires, you know, take all their wealth and resources and literally hop on a plane full of money and leave the country. OK, that's a different conversation. Like, like, I need to know where we're coming in at when people talk about revolution and they want to talk about, you know, societal collapse, you know, for when it comes to America. I want to know, like, what level are we talking about? Because that changes the dynamics of the conversation. People are throwing around revolution and throwing around, you know, system collapse, you know, not really understanding what that shit looks like. What that shit looks like is is is, is it looks like. You know, what you see if you ever played the video game, The Division, you know, primarily Division 2, because I didn't get into Division 1. I wish I did, but I didn't get into Division 1. I started in Division 2 with the different factions and the hyenas and the outcasts. And, you know, it's like the, the plays like the movie. There was a movie called The Domestics. There's another movie where you got these different rogue ass factions, you know, and and so. You know, while Colonel McGregor dismisses, you know, the white supremacists and the white nationalists, oh, those are those are they want nothing more than collapse. They they got a whole movement called accelerationism to 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 fast forward to a collapse. Then when there's no rule of law, they can go out there and they can purge. And the first people they're gonna purge are gonna be the minorities. This goes into the freaking, you know, the 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 um what what the the, the, the Turner diaries. Rolls right into that. You know, and, and obviously, you know, I've been telling black people you need to prepare. Right. But if there was ever like a total collapse and they're talking about buying gold, like I love these people. that are like, oh, buy gold. And, 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 and you know how fucking heavy gold is? You know what I mean? And on top of on top of the fact that in a situation where things collapse, might makes right. Might makes right. Who's got the most guns? Who's got the most uh, soldiers? or armed individuals, right? And then, and then you know, whatever group comes together and says, this is the way that it's going to be, 
is essentially the way that it's going to be. And I'm talking everything from public executions to, you know, basically just labeling people, whatever the fuck you want to label, label them. Right. All the shit that you saw in Nazi Germany when the when the when the Nazis took over, that was essentially even though, yes, they were they were voted in. But that was a revolution. That was a revolution that that not only not only, um, you know, affected Germany, but expanded outside of Germany when they just decided, oh, we're just going to invade, you know, other people. And they blitzkrieg Poland in 1933. You know, so. You know, there's a lot of ugly shit that comes with that. It's not just a matter of, oh, there's going to be pain in the economy and ooh, and 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 you'll have to downsize your that downsize your life. No, it's it's co- collapse is collapse, and folks are not understanding that. You know, and um, you know, again, when it comes to when it comes to black people, like like y'all need to stop sleeping on that Turner Diary shit. You know, it's, even when we talk about, you know, law enforcement, like 95 percent of law enforcement, are, they're white. It's only in, in major metropolitan areas where you'll see cops of different minority, uh, different you know minority groups and whatnot. But like the thing that pisses me off is like even like let's talk about the dog whistles, like where she was where uh, Natalie's brought up. um, What did she say? She brought up. Uh, personal responsibility, like dog whistle. I'm like, why are you bringing up personal response? What is, you just got finished laying out how the system is rigged and the fucking white elites and oligarchs are screwing everybody over, right? And yet you're talking about personal responsibility. For what is personal responsibility going to do you in that situation? And see, this is where like you get the, you get white people who still want to maintain white hegemony, even as the system collapses. They think that like whatever's going to emerge from that is going to be, you know, them calling the shots and them in control and whatnot. And, and, and stupid thing is, is like, you know, Colonel McGregor's, you know, he's up there and he brings up the point about, you know, like the Ivy League school people, you know, they're the ones that have been running things. We need to have people from Montana and people from rural areas and whatnot. Right. And, and I'm, I'm hearing the dog whistles because he's naming like Montana and fucking like I think not Montana is the one that I remember. But like all these like he said brought up Texas. Right. Montana, Texas. Right. It's like who li- who like who lives there. Right. You know, Montana was like a big dog whistle for me. But any of these like more like rural states, again, and and, and then he brought up the whole thing about values. I've already said it. I've already said it. One of the main reasons why you have this absolutely retarded left and people going to the extremes of running to anything goes and they want to do whatever the fuck they want to do. The one of the main reasons they're doing that is because the 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 uh, the the people that claim themselves to be, you know, the the backbone of 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 not just morality and Christianity and values and everything. They ignore the fact that I've I've been saying this forever. Nobody is following any of this shit out of the goodness of their heart. If you have a system that works for most people and and the social contract is, hey, you know, go to school, get an education, work here for 30 years. The company is going to be as loyal to you as you're going to be to the company. And you'll be able to, you know, work here for 30 years and retire and and play with your grandkids and you know, build up some wealth and resources to pass on. Not saying you're going to be rich, but you'll have something. You'll have something to pass on, and the next generation will be better than 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 where you are currently standing. Most people would go with that. Most people would be like, "Hey, let me go dye my hair back to whatever fucking brown or black or whatever their natural color is." You know, let me let me cut this fucking ponytail off. You know, let me not get those tattoos I was going to get. You know, let me go out here and, and, and get my bitch act right. Because if when I got my bitch act right, you know, that means I'm going to I'm going to receive and I'm going to get X, Y and Z. That seems like a reasonable exchange. But see, once people recognize that the fucking carrot is not there, which is exactly what Colonel McGregor is saying and what this white woman, Natalie Br- Br- Brunel, is saying, 
once the carrot is not there, why are you still fucking talking about morals? Why are you still talking about values or values more, more is more, more what they were talking about than morals? I'll get to morals in a second. Why are you still talking about values? And again, I, values, when I hear values, it is code word for Judeo-Christianity, right? That, that, that's, that's what it is. And family and structure. And, and we want to go back to the leave it to beaver days and, and, and patriarchal fathers in the home and wives that, that, are, that, are, that, are, that stay home and cook and clean and are taken care of. And everybody is happy and kids are playing in the freaking playground with their knee high socks and shit, right? That, like, like, that's what I hear when I hear the term values. This, I want to go back to freaking the wonder years. Okay, which I don't have any issue with. But what they always ignore when it comes to that is the money. And it's crazy to sit there and watch people talking about money and capital and resources and wealthy people hoarding all the wealth and, and oligarchs and everything. And then as soon as we get to the fucking values, all of a sudden it's people people should get their bitch act right for the sake of getting their bitch act right. I'm like, it doesn't work like that. Sorry, your values are not that important to people. If what 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 values? I want to say this: when you have the catalyst of money, notice what I said: the catalyst of money, and people can plan things and 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 and, and they can see into the you know and see where they could be in five or ten years into the future if i do this i'm gonna get this as an output when they can see that okay many of those people because they're adhering to a structure they insist that other people will adhere to a structure because they're like hey this is the game plan i don't need you coming in here and fucking it up okay and and, and you'll get a society where people uphold that Right. Because, hey, the system is working for most people and therefore th they're going to uphold the values. But if the system does not work for most people, people are going to be looking for a new system and they will throw out the values from the old system. And when the old system didn't work, I don't know what you Christians don't fucking understand about that. You guys keep running around with these ideas of values as though you can have a society full of broke people and yet they're going to uphold freaking Christian values and family values when they can't even form a family nor have the or purchase the fucking house to have the family in. The fuck are you talking about? Like and, and, and these white conservatives, white people keep fucking saying this shit. I swear I could put hands on you every time you guys fucking say this shit. You, you like again, you, you're so consumed with the idea of whiteness and everything that comes along with it, you're not paying attention to what the fuck you're saying. And again, the same thing goes with, you know, the morals and and morality. At the end of the day, if your society is so broken that that people are are struggling, you know, to get what they need, and they got to go and they got to steal and grab shit to try to sell and flip and all the other stuff, all the boosting that's going on at Home Depot and and, 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 and these other stores, the Apple store and everything, which is dumb because the phones don't work after you leave. You know what I mean? But I'm saying all of that. These people aren't organized. You know, people say, oh, they're, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're organized. When I say organized, they're not organized in terms of a long-term goal. Those are short-term actions. You can say that they're organized as a group of people, as a ring to, to, to get the short-term game of robbing a store, but they, there's no, there's no long-term plan because as far as, as they can see, there is no future, which is why they've reduced themselves down to doing that. And what pisses me off about people and what pisses me off primarily about these like white conservatives and these white talking heads is that is the consequence of your society collapsing. It is a consequence. All these people, the people that running around talk about rule of law. No, when your society fails because you have set up a broken system full of white oligarchic people who control the infrastructure and are cannibalistic and are even consuming not only other white people, but their own goddamn grandchildren, 
expect to get motherfucking carjacked. Expect to have your front door kicked the fuck in. Expect to get pistol whipped. Expect to get robbed and jacked and everything else. Talking about rule rule of law. Why should they respect the rule of law when the freaking people that run the country don't respect the, 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 the rule of, of other people surviving? Systems are like an organism, right? The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. If the mitochondria doesn't fucking get its glucose, it doesn't spit out the ATP. If it doesn't spit out the ATP, the motherfucking cell dies. And what we got going on right now, we got like a cancer cell. The cancer cell just goes off and just, you know, just starts replicating DNA and and multiplying like wild at the expense of the body. And then we all know what happens at the end stage of cancer. You fucking die. And like Colonel McGregor said with the part that I agreed with is the people that have the money, you know, the, 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 the fucking Nancy Pelosi and all these other fucking politicians. I don't care whether they're conservative or liberal. I'm just saying Nancy Pelosi because I went and I freaking looked up how much fucking millions of, of, of dollars this bitch got. And I'm like, how the fuck are you making that much? How do you come into fucking politics with no money and then you leave politics and you got and you got crazy amounts of money? How does your net worth go up and you're only supposed to be making one hundred and seventy four thousand dollars a year? How does that fucking work? Yeah, we know how it works. Inside trading. Inside trading. Oh, let's get taxpayer dollars and 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 and, and we support Israel and we support Ukraine and and again now now yes, now that we got that bill passed, now it's time for me to go and buy a whole bunch of stocks in Lockheed Martin and and freaking Boeing and all these other military and industrial complex companies. And then the stocks, you know, go skyrocket and then freaking, you know, that's how they make their day of money. You see, they don't serve the interest of the people. And again, the, the, the overwhelming majority of, of Congress and the Senate are fucking white people. It's, it's your system. Don't try to run away from it. I'm going to keep calling white people out on this shit. You know, because again, and I agree with Natalie, but for different reasons, she's like, oh, we're focused on the cultural war and everybody's focused on the cultural on, on the cultural shit. And I'm like, yeah, because it's a fucking distraction. It's a distraction. Again, the, the, uh, this is see they want to they see the cultural war shit is to be able to go off and not just the LGBTQ Q shit. This is what I was telling the Pakistani guy. I'm like, no, it's 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 to point at oh well the problem with the country is really the the minorities and the blacks and the Mexicans, you know, and and how they're coming in here and they're 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 the the the, the Pakistanis they want to push Sharia law and and they're changing the fabric of America, you know, all these like abstractions, right? All these all these uh, sort of intangible things, right? You can't get down to the jobs, you can't get down to the economic opportunities, you can't get down to affordable housing, right? You can't get down to those conversations. Right. And this goes back to that white man, the, the freaking ice man inheritance, you know, with just the way that white people think their paranoia blocks them from them seeing it for what it is. And even in the process of trying to get them to see it for what it is, they're st- they're running around still trying to figure out a way for them to maintain white supremacy and white hegemony. And I'm like, nah, fuck out of here. Y'all motherfuckers, y'all motherfuckers drop the ball. Plain and simple. Drop the ball. You got all these white people. It's so funny to hear all these people. Oh, why are they trying to come to America? Because you vacuumed all the fucking resources into this country. Again, going back to when you look at, uh, you know, the, 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 the things that the CIA has done, you know, when it comes to, you know, other countries and, and, and the way that they've assassinated leaders all around the globe, kept despots in power, right? Done all type of nefarious shit, right? So that they can exploit those lands. Anytime a nation tries to privatize, excuse me, uh, 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 socialize their fucking natural resources. Oh, here comes, here comes the freaking, you know, the, the, the white corporations from America. Oh no, fuck that shit. 
right? And then they're, again, paying the donor, you know, they're the donors, paying the politicians, right, to serve their interests. I mean, again, look at freaking United Fruit. Look at the Banana Republic and what the United States did to Guatemala. Guatemala, right? It's right there. The writing is on the fucking wall. You know, look at look at the way that the freaking United States propped up Dominican Republic and then stole the 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 freaking wealth and the resources from Haiti. They stole the, the little bit of gold that they did have. And then sit there and turn around and go, oh, see, you niggas just can't govern yourselves. Looks like we're going to have to recolonize you. You're dealing with a bunch of fucking psychopaths. And now, the, you know, the, 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 the fucking, it's like, it's like, it's like the fucking, it's like you're, we're in an insane asylum. And then the freaking insane people are running the asylum. And we're just like stuck here. And then you have, and then you have like, like, like the, the other people that are, that are, uh, you know, supposed to be the staff at the insane asylum. And they're busy defending the doctors at the insane asylum who are insane, who are supposed to be treating the fucking patients for being insane. Like, it's just nuts. It's nuts. You know, like b bottom line, if this shit collapsed, I'm telling you. If you are a person of color, even though I hate that fucking term, right? But r real talk, and I'm only saying that because, you know, again, uh, we were, I was watching this shit, you know, with a Pakistani man, and we talked about it. He admitted. He said, yeah, you're right. You're right. Because, you know, he's 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 been experiencing a lot of racism, you know, lately. You got the, the motherfuckers calling him Haji. I was like, Haji? He's like, yeah, they call me fucking Haji. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, anytime, anytime they get mad at me, I'm like, it goes, it immediately goes to race, doesn't it? He's like, yeah. He had a guy that came up to him, was like, like basically he runs a business. The guy wanted some extra shit and, and he was like, nah, I can't do it for you. And then the guy was like, I killed like five of you guys in Afghanistan. I'm like, he's not even Afghani. He's fucking Pakistani. You're not even getting the shit right. You know, you know, I had to point out, you know, you got, you know, yeah, we had Buffalo and you had fucking, you know, that white guy that went and tried to shoot up a damn Sikh temple because he can't tell the difference between fucking Sikhs and Muslims. I'm like, I'm like, you're on the chopping block too, dude. You know, you don't, you don't fucking get it. You better get that model minority shit right the fuck out of your head. You know, and if you think that you're going to be able to, to keep what you got, Again, black people already had that. We already had, you know, freaking freaking Rosewood and, and Tulsa and Slocum, Texas and Wilmington, North Carolina and Elaine, Arkansas. We already had our communities. And what happened? White people came in there and burn us the fuck out. Don't think that if the shit collapsed that they wouldn't burn you the fuck out too. be on that same bullshit that they were on in the 1920s. Why is that Negro got a piano? I ain't got no piano. How does he have a piano? A nigga on a horse? I ain't never seen no nigga on a horse. How come I I don't have no horse to want to ride around town on? We gotta fix this. Same shit, same, same fucking insecurity, jealousy, all that shit. And there are white supremacists clamoring around waiting for the system co to collapse because once the system collapsed again covid already showed us what the police officers can't do you're on your motherfucking own first off they already don't pull up now whenever we got shit going on so what makes you think they're gonna pull up if some shit were to fucking collapse they're not they're not you are on your fucking own they will take it as opportunity because again what did covid what did covid show everybody this is one of the reasons why you got the smash and grabs now. You can't catch us all. That's what COVID said. COVID said loud and clear. Police officers, you can't catch us all. And I knew that. And he said, you know, again, you watch, you know, nine meals away from anarchy. And there's plenty of videos that discuss, you know, what societal collapse actually fucking looks like. Oh, and you, and, and you ain't seen savagery until the fucking... You know, the, 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 the stores, the supermarkets are empty. You ain't seen savagery. 
You know, I, I mean, I mean, seriously speaking. If you haven't played the Division Two, you should play the Division Two because that's the closest. That is the closest that you'll get, you know, to to actually a, a, a world that has been created that 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 illustrates what things would actually fucking look like. And people really can't wrap their head around it. Oh, that can't happen. Yeah, motherfucker said that shit on September 10th too. Oh, it can't happen. Even though. Even though they were warned and they still ignored it. You know, it just, it just, it just, it just irritates me when I hear these dog whistles. I'm like, personal response, personal response. You just got finished saying that the way that the system was set up was literally so that the wealthy can just continue to fucking vac vacuum money up and up and up and they will continue to do it until they can't do it anymore and the system fucking breaks. And then they will, you know, have their great escape, you know? And, and again, that's only if the fucking dollar, you know, doesn't collapse. And maybe they do have their wealth and resources in other nations or other commodities, you know, and things like that. But, you know, they're not going to stop doing what they're doing. And it always kills me at how the the moral the, the the how I want to say this the focus on who is maintaining or preserving values or morality is always on the proletariat and it's never on the motherfuckers that have, were elected to make decisions on the behalf of the people like 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 they create the so so the people vote for those people to be in office those people create laws to maintain law and order but then those people fuck the system up so much that the proletariat ends up in dire and desperate situations right and they go they end up kicking off in the survival mode right and then people like colonel mcgregor sit there and go oh well i mean we got to talk about morality and values to the proletariat i'm like you just got finished saying the oligarchs are fucking them over. You just got finished saying that. Why don't you have any smoke for the oligarchs and 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 the politicians and the people that that are didn't obviously are not serving the interest of the fucking people. They created the situation of desperation. They created the situation where people are going out there and they got to choose between doing some fucked up shit and not having or not eating or having to look their kids in the face and, and you know, and say, hey, I don't have anything for you. It's like it just it kills me with that. And and again, they still think that, you know, you're going to have some situation that's going to be, you know, fucking maintained or preserved some sort of some sort of order that will take place. And again, there will be look when it comes to black people. All these other groups in this country, you know, you got the white folks and then you got the other people that don't know American history. They look at black people like we're. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a fucking infestation. Okay. They don't, they don't factor in or consider all the things that were intentionally done to African-Americans to cripple African-Americans. I mean, it's so bad that fucking the, even the white supremacist that went and shot up the fucking Jacksonville had it in his manifesto, but then he did his little mental gymnastics to try to get around it. Well, I mean, they should be able to get it together by now. <laughs> who says based off of what when you got redlining blockbusting jim crow eminent domain urban renewal convict leasing debt peonage cointel pro you know racial housing covenants you know you know the denial of economic opportunities denial of of, of fa fha loans denial of proper access to the gi bill denial of the first 20 years of social security Wealth that was not allowed and able to be accumulated, maintained, and passed on. Like I, somebody I was going to address, you know, the other day, he was like, he was like, well, why do why do African Americans need reparations? Uh, African Americans, you you know, you weren't a slave. And I'm like, well, hold on, stop. I'm like, were during Reconstruction, were African Americans supposed to get 
I'm glad you go with the, well, you weren't a slave argument. Were African-Americans that were slaves, were they supposed to get reparations? And the answer to that obviously is yes, right? Because if the argument is to be made, well, you weren't a slave. Okay, so I guess slaves would actually have a better argument, right? Because they were actually slaves and they actually went through it, right? So there shouldn't be any objection to them getting reparations for being slaves, correct? Right? But did those slaves get reparations? No, the fuck they did not. So as a result of them not getting reparations, right, they weren't able to take the, whatever the reparations were, 40 acres and a mule, which was one of the things it was supposed to be, and pass that down to their descendants. On top of not getting the reparations, when black people did create uh, sustainable communities, despite not getting the reparations, up oh, here comes fucking jealous white people with any old excuse to come in and literally decimate and burn down the entire black community, whether it be any one of the communities that I named, Elaine, Arkansas, Wilmington, North Carolina, you know, friggin', uh, uh, the, the, um, you know, Rosewood, you know, and then even some of the, the smaller incidents that happened, like in Springfield, Illinois and, and, and Omaha, Nebraska with uh, 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 Willie Brown and shit like that. You know, any, just anything to just go in there and, and just go and purge. So, like I said, I don't even have to go back to slavery. I can go back to reparations for what happened in the 1920s. And again, they still don't even want to pay up. You know, when it comes to that, we are dealing with a bunch of fucking psychopaths. That's what we're dealing with. So, you know, it's like when we're having this, you know, this conversation about, you know, collapse and stuff like that. Black people, you need to take the shit fucking seriously because there are those who are waiting for a larger rule without law just so that they can get at your ass. Just now, now, arguably, oh, it, it would be wonderful if they just underestimated us and we were actually fucking prepared. And then, you know, they fucked around and found out. I think many of them would fuck around and find out. They would just assume, you know, like it's Hurricane Katrina. It's like pheasant season. Like that white man said, you know, in her, during Hurricane Katrina. It's like pheasant season. Right. I'm pretty sure. That many of them, you know, in their simple, simple mindedness are going to fuck around and find out. But you still got to remember, we're only 14 percent of this country, 13, 14 percent, whatever the fuck it is. You know, fucking buy gold, nigga, buy bullets, buy bullets. That's where the motherfucking power is. Buy bullets, because if this shit actually collapses and that's another thing, like when you when you get that close revolution collapse whatever when you get that close to you know just i mean just hitting the rock bottom you know what i mean it's like what the white people do is they assume that it'll, like it'll dip there'll be a revolution people will be marching in the streets and everything and all of a sudden all the politicians in congress will throw their hands up and whoa we, we surrender and 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 they're gonna give up all their assets and whatnot like most people they don't even know how to run this shit they don't even know how to run the shit. If the, if, if the system gets flipped on its head, the, the fucking wealthy will give you the keys to a sinking ship. And they will be in Switzerland or somewhere else with their wealth and their resources, you know, just watching the demise as though they weren't like at the helm or, or on the ship. You know, like people think like the, the scenario is is, you know, extreme. But OK, you say the scenario is extreme. You know, most of you all didn't think that we would be where we are right now. You know, 15 years ago, you know, 20 years ago, y'all didn't think that we would be, you know, for those of you who are old enough, y'all didn't think that we would be here. Y'all had y'all had hopes of a bright future. You didn't think that corporate America was going to be as toxic as this. You didn't think that your job will be replaced by AI. You didn't think that, 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 uh, companies would go out here and put up fake job postings just so that they can collect your information. 
You know what I mean? Oh, whoa, we did. We got a job shortage. Oh, we got a job shortage. You know, it's like, yo, here's the job. Here's, hey, here I am. Here's the job shortage. And yet, you know, can't, can't get in the door. Right. I mean, I knew, I knew that that shit was a problem shortly after undergrad. When I still, you know, you try to apply to a job and it's like, oh, three to five years experience. Motherfucker, I just graduated. The fuck? <laughs> I knew that shit way back then. I was like, there's something wrong. There's something wrong with this picture. Now, you know, the fucking AI, like anybody who's, who has a resume literally is the resume is, uh, what do you want to call it? The re- it's, it's all automated. People are putting out automated resumes the, 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 on, the, on the resume receiving end. That's automated. Like you're nobody. You're nobody. You know, and boomers are still running around. No, what you need to do is you need to print out your resume and you need to take it in an envelope and you need to go to the place that you want to work and and, and knock on the door and tell the security guard that you want to talk to Mr. Johnson. And then you go down to Mr. John, you wait in the lobby and then you Mr. Johnson will see you and you go down there and you plead your case. That's boomer talk. That's boomer talk on how to get a job in 2024. You see? So so any of you going, oh, this is just made some made up shit. Like, no, no. You know, it will get progressively worse. I mean, OK, I'll give you some, you tell me how the vast majority of you even listening to this video, you tell me how you're going to get into a house in the next five years. Tell me. Tell me how you're going to get into a house in the next five years. I bet you you can't do it unless you're making well in the six figures. And I mean, well, in the six figures. You're not going to be able to do it. You know, and, 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 and you know, don't be surprised if you start seeing, you know, uh, white folks, you know, trying to move into black neighborhoods, not just doing some gentrification shit. Gentrification, that's like there's like a whole you know, the development companies when it comes to gentrification. No, I'm just talking about white people like, hey, how much did you say this house was? Oh, this house is about, you know, 170,000. Oh, I can do that. Yeah, but I mean, you're in the middle of the ghetto. Hey, it's a house, nigga. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to start seeing, you're going to start seeing white folks. They're not going to give a fuck where they at. They're going, you know, you know, be strapped up, blickied up, you know, nigga, try it if you want, you know, fuck around and find out. You're right. It'll be reverse fuck around if you find out. I'm saying that's even if they're able to even get in the door. What's so crazy is. You know, you have all these people running around screaming about socialism and communism and everything, the way that fucking capitalism, you know, has been has has been abused, you know, the way that it, the way that it is currently set up is going to lead to young people subscribing to, you know, socialist policies or policies that are more socialist. You know, policies like, you know, you can't own more than three properties or some shit like that. You can't have you can't be one of these landlords or something like that. Oh, oh, the rich people, they're going to push back. And again, who are the politicians going to look or, or going to who are they going to follow? Are they going to follow you? It's like it's like, OK, you got to balance it out. It's like, all right. If I if I don't do what the people say, right, th- this is how it's supposed to work. If you don't do what the people say, the people vote you out. Right. And and if you if you and then on the other side, you know, you have the, the, the donors, right. Which let's say I was a wealthy, you know, I was a wealthy realtor, right. I was, I, I, I own, you know, $150 million worth of, of, of rental units, right. I'm going to throw money at the politician. That's going to vote in the opposite direction. Cause I want to be able to keep what the fuck I got. Right. And so if the people are too stupid or too distracted to vote the person out, which people know, Right. Because you should be in there voting on what you should be voting on the issue at hand. We need you to vote this way on housing because it's a fucking problem. Right. But instead, what does that politician do? The politician goes, I mean, what about abortion? I mean, what about the LGBTQ? 
I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, what about the Second Amendment? I mean, I mean, I mean, what about women's rights? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, what about what about uh, black people uh, reparations? Uh, I mean, I mean, what about that? Yes, yes, hot button issues, hot button issues. That way, you don't get, you don't force them. You don't, you're not a one issue voter, at least not on the shit that what you're supposed to focus on. You're a one issue voter on the other bullshit, the abstractions, the shit that there's really no real way to define it. Right. The shit that has nothing to do with money and capital and resources and wealth and all the other shit. They want you to be focused on the, the, the bullshit. The bullshit. And as long as you're focused on the bullshit, that politician can take the money from the fucking wealthy donor. Can, they can take the money from the wealthy land developer and the realtor and all that. They can take the money from them. Because at the end of the day, you're never going to come together and vote in a coordinated fashion to vote that person out. So all I got to do is go up there and, you know, OK, thank you for your donations. Let me take some of this, you know, you know, put some ads out there where I'm not even really doing shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm looking like a I'm looking like a fucking high school teacher from the 1950s and then. You know, at the end of the day, I give a big thumbs up and I say, and I approve this message. What message? You didn't say shit. And then, and then the, the, the fucking voters are going to go out there and vote for them again. Right? Again, hot button issue. Yeah, you know, oh, don't vote for me because if you don't vote for me, the blacks will take over. What about the housing? Oh, we're, we're not discussing housing today. Yeah, but I heard your biggest your biggest donor and contributor is, you know, this giant fucking corporation or conglomerate of realtors and fucking, you know, land developers and everything. Silence. <laughs> you you didn't see any next question. Oh, you know, get out. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, I'm trying to trying to rush past the motherfucking cameras. That's the system that we have. And nobody's, you know, y'all fucking in La La Land on stupid shit. Especially the fucking white people. White people make up the majority of this country, you know, when it comes to voting and shit like that. White people and how they vote is what ultimately determines things. Not 14% of the population or less. All this shit with the Muslims in, in freaking Dearborn, Michigan. Oh, we're not going to vote for Joe Biden because he supports Israel. And, you know, what about the Palestinians? Their vote doesn't fucking matter. That shit does not motherfucking matter. But they let their voices be known that we are dissatisfied with you. Fuck out of here. You can't come to our mosque. You see, that's how black people should be reacting to shit. You know, but... You know, uh, like the the whole thing is broken. It's just broken. And every even if even if I could get everybody, black, white, rainbow coalition, everybody to come together and form Voltron, you got to recognize that you're going up against wealthy and powerful people who are throwing money all over the place. And if you can't stay focused and you can't stay on code in terms of what the people need and you get all divided about the blacks, the Jews, the Mexicans, you get all dumb on that shit. Well, guess what? They've already won because you're never going to, you know what it's like? It's like whenever they have, I remember they had like the girl that won, the black girl that won. She was like the one old miss, right? And then they, and the, and the problem was is the white people they split their vote. They had like it was like the black girl and it was like two other white girls or whatever. And the white people they had a fit, but the white people split their vote. They voted for the two white girls. So it was like, oh, you know, here's you know, you know, fucking I don't know, freaking three thousand votes for this white girl, three thousand votes for this white girl. And then all 7,000 black people go and vote for, you know, fucking the black girl. And then the black girl wins. And the white people are like, oh, you know, they went crazy. That's literally what happens pretty much every fucking election. I haven't heard of, and this is the whole thing. I'm going to say this and I'm going to get, I'm going to get off. 
I haven't heard a freaking, uh, I haven't heard any agenda coming from us. I, I'll give, I'll give, let me not, I, I, I want to say this. From when I say us, I'm talking about um, millennials by and large. African Americans, you know, Foundation of Black, we've been we've been talking reparations for the last couple of years now. But when it comes to just across the board, like there being like a unified, this is what the millennials and the zillennials want, I haven't heard that shit. I haven't heard any demands. We just like along for the ride, letting the fucking geriatric ward and all these boomers who ain't going to be here in fucking five to 10 years, you know, letting them, you know, continue with what they've been doing. You know, the, 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 the I can't even talk. The greatest amount of suffering, you know, that they're going to face is the fact that these boomers have fucked, the white boomers have fucked up so much that they're going to die without having any grandkids. And they may never have any grandkids. Again, you know, when it comes to white supremacy and preserving the white race and, and maintaining, you know, white supremacy and white hegemony, like, I'm like, I'm like, see, they're cannibalistic. They're cannibalistic. I mean, the audacity to sit there and think, yeah, you, you all should have kids when you've created a whole culture of if you can't afford kids, don't have kids. Right. Because that's what they said to the black people. And now they, they set up a system where their own kids can't have kids. Right. But yet they call themselves white supremacy, meaning maintaining white supremacy. I'm like, you, you, who, who are you fooling? Like, 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 I mean, the nonsense of it all. And all they got, all they got is it's hilarious watching it all over the internet. All they got for white zillennials and, and, and millennials is personal responsibility. That that's their go-to. That is their go-to. And there's some Gen Xers in there too that talk that bullshit. Right? Oh, personal responsibility. The reason, the reason why you are where you are is because you know your, your spending patterns. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's not making enough money to fucking save anything to do anything. Your math ain't mathing. You know what I mean? Like the fucking the fucking average income has been hovering between forty and fifty thousand dollars for like the last fucking thirty years. What are you talking about? Meanwhile, cost of living up, food up, housing up, price of a car up, everything up, daycare up. You know, and then and then they're like, well, why aren't young people having kids? You know, and then again, you know. Millennials and millennials are gonna face the, the 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 problem with that, cause literally, literally, we're getting handed the keys to a sinking ship, right? Because many of us aren't having kids, cause can't afford the kids, right? And then that means no economic growth because you have that inverted population pyramid, right? So less kids, less growth, less expansion. And, oh, we need a, we need an infrastructure, but infrastructure built for what? There's no growing population. I mean, I mean, I mean, they have fucked this situation up so much. I, I, I'm really trying to get you all to understand what your fucking boomer parents and grandparents have done to this fucking system, because they're the ones, they're the ones that are, that are up there, you know, Jamie Dimon and Larry Fink and all these other people, they're the ones, that's, the, the, these are fucking old ass white men, they milk the cow dry, they milk the cow dry, and instead of focusing on them, you focus on the abstractions, the, the fucking, you know, so, what's, what's today's social problem, da, 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 da. like the shit that you can literally ignore, you can ignore the shit, you know, and, and and all of that is designed to 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 keep you distracted. They have to constantly throw agitations at you. I mean, perfect example is is like what you see on Newsbreak. Now, I know Newsbreak is controlled by the Chinese, so we know what they're up to. But you ever, you ever see these like misleading headlines that are just designed to trigger you? And then you go and you click on it and literally the article has nothing to do with they just wanted your click. It's just clickbait. You know, shit that's just designed to fucking trigger you. You know, and, and I've seen I've seen so many comments, especially from white folks. You all will write comments before you even read what the fucking post is. It's sad. It's sad. But that's the reality. 
you know, and that, and that's that's you know the world that we live in, and and why nothing gets done. People got to be on code, and I'm not talking like racial, like got to be on racial code. No, people got to be on code for what's in their best economic interest for the masses. And again, white people got that Southern strategy bullshit going on where they're like, no, no, I I can't vote that way. Why? Because that'll help everybody. And that includes black people. We can't have that. <sighs> Let me just fucking, oh, these people kill me, man. You know, and, and just, and it's sad. It's sad. You know what I mean? Because, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't want to have to do what I would do in a scenario where everything would collapse. Because I'd be on some Negan shit. But it looks like that's where we're headed. Anyway, that's my video. SWP out. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe.